All right, so I run this, and I get this output. All right, so it's the Brady motion model. You all saw that, right? What does that mean? What do these numbers mean? So the first one that comes out. Right. What does that mean? Okay, we know what log is. Right? Okay, what's likelihood? Probability, good, of what? Almost the probability of the data given your tree and model. Yeah, this comes back to the sloppiness with people. Yeah. All right, the probability of your data given your tree. Okay? Um, this probability, I mean, so it's sort of hard to think like. So this probability is negative, right? We're doing log of a number between 0 and 1, typically. Okay? It's a little fuzzier with continuous data. Um, Maximum repeat a probability of density function could be greater than one. Let's ignore that for now. Okay. Um, so if you have a probability and you're getting the log of that probability. Okay. Why log? Well, because these probabilities can get very small. Right. If I have a, a tree of a thousand taxa, what's the probability of getting exactly A T G G G C C C C C for taxa one, A T G G G for taxa two? It's vanishing small. Right. So your computer's not going to be able to even store it with any precision. Right. So we do the log. Much easier to store that information. Okay, print numerical underflow. Okay, good. How about this? Trait one beta. Yeah, this is a sloppiness in Geiger. This is just the Brownian motion rate. Okay, the rate of wiggle. They just call it. He just calls it beta. I don't know why. Okay, more, more often it's called sigma. It's all Greek to me, but I mean, what matters is it's the rate, the rate at which you wiggle. Okay. <coughs> AIC. All right, so it stands for the Akiyaki Information Criterion, right? Um, right after, it was originally called An Information Criterion, but the guy who wrote it was named Akiyaki, so like the uh, AIC, that's called the PK Information Criterion, rather than An Information Criterion. Um, um, <coughs> how does it work? What's the basic idea behind it? Mm-hmm. Right. Lower AC makes a be better model. And the way AC is calculated equals yes. Okay. Negative two log likelihood plus two K. Okay. So likelihood, probably the data. Okay. As this number gets smaller, with log and negative, the probability goes up. Okay, so the better your data fits fit the model, the smaller this number is. Okay, what's k? Number of free parameters, right? So in this model, we have two. Okay, that wiggle rate and also the state at the root, for the ancestral state. So two free parameters. Okay, and again, if we have fewer parameters, AIC gets smaller. We want to have simple models, okay? And so we want to have both better fit and simple models. Why is this, you know, this nice sum? This came out from the derivation. And if you do BIC, it's similar, but this is a little different, okay? Um, and so there's, you know, little tweaks for this, okay? But here's the basic idea: we want to, you know, make the fit better, but also not have too many parameters. That's why you're doing a trade-off. Um, AICC is similar to AIC, but it has an extra term that deals with the number of data points you have. Okay. Um, because this becomes, you know, the, the approximations used to get this work well when you have lots of data. You know, lots of data, approximations aren't as good. So the AICC is something that fits a little better, but as you add more data points, it, it converges on AIC. Okay, that's AICC. We're not going to get into that, really, but in real life, you should use AICC rather than AIC. Okay?
And that's it. That's all that this model has. So the likelihood, the AAC, the rate, and my three parameters. Okay. Question? Okay, I'm going to do delta fit. By the way, I want to post this code online. You can run through it yourself. Okay, it's actually online. I just hid the URL. Um, here's a delta model. Right? Why am I doing a delta model? Right. So my hypothesis is the rate slows down. Right? So delta's way is stretching the tree so that I can have the rate slow down or speed up. Okay? If my, my question about, you know, does it change happen mostly at the tips, I'd use a different model. Okay, I'm going to do is forget what the letter is, go look it up and, you know, question mark fit continuously. Oh, I want the Kaplan model. Okay, I'm going to use Kaplan model. Okay? So here I get these delta values. Same thing, same rate, but now I have this delta value. Okay? Um, do you want to see anything funny about this value? I'm not going to look at because you just have a single point, but it's darn close to three, but not quite three. Right? That seems like a funny number to get. Right? Could you think about what delta is? Is delta not bounded by three in any way? No, it's not like I have like something like three three characters only approach that can be between one and three or something like that. There's no natural bound to delta, right? But this seems to be stuck at three, or just below three. What's going on with that? Okay. So, the value for delta looks funny. What? What did you say? <coughs> right, so it could be we're getting stuck somewhere in our lithium surface, right? So it could be we're getting, so we can compare AICs and say, okay, this AIC is 18.377, and this one is 18.23. Which one, which model's better? This one, the Brownian motion model, right? But if my problem is that I'm not estimating delta well, right? If the probability of heads for my coins is two thirds, but I'm not allowing it to be get to two thirds, maybe I'm you know choosing incorrectly, okay? And actually, that's happening here. We'll figure out how that, ha how that happens. Okay? So this is something where you know, so you could just go and say, okay, AAC is better. Nope, not better. Done. Move on. Okay? But with all the analyses, whether you're doing ecology, evolution. You know, your taxes. Um, you have to get into it and see, figure out like what's actually going on. What do these parameters mean? Right. Um, so first of all, I mean our point estimate for delta shows what about the rate of, evolu of beak evolution. So it's two point nine nine. Right. Yeah, it's speeding up. Right. And our hypothesis is it's dropping off. So I have some people who said, you know, well, you know, this is not the better model, so let's just go B at one. <laughs> um, which, is, which is actually true, but it's good to see here, like, oh yeah, the primary value is showing it. Even if this is the better model, the primary value is working against our hypothesis. Right? So just look at your data. Yeah. All right. So the data the value for the delta looks funny. There's something about a bound somewhere. Right, when I was looking at the fit continuous help. Okay, so we can look at that. Well, you've seen that. All right. What I can do instead is just look at the function. So here's the fit continuous function. It's actually, it's pretty short. Right? And yeah, I mean, at this point, it's going to be scary for you. It's actually not scary. Okay. Um, we can go through, and so I think it might be something to do with bounds, right? I saw a bound somewhere. It was like three might be a bound. So just look through and see if I see anything that looks like a bound. Call it if you see it. Good. Exactly. <laughs> That's perfect. Yep, bounds. Good. So there are these bounds things, right? And one of them, huh, look at the value I got. Okay. Here's an image of open source. You can dig in and say, oh, what's going on here? 
because there's nothing in the documentation about what the bound actually is. So you're going to say, oh, look, I see bound. The bound it looks like my bound. That's what I, that's what I got. Is that what actually happened? Well, I can't really tell if you did matrix. Yeah, I can't do that matrix. Right? Okay, what can we do? Well, we can just copy this code and paste it in and run it. Okay. So here's that code I just copied. And I'm just going to print out the results. And here, here it is in readable form. Okay. So what do I see about my result? Yeah, hit the max. Yeah. My delta value hit the max. So it could be my true delta is much bigger than this. Right? And I'm just saying that it's not the delta model because I've constrained my search. So what can we do? Well, we could just try getting bigger number, like adding adding a bigger bound, right? And we'll do it eventually. <coughs> what I want to do first is just sort of look at the surface. Okay. So I think that there's you know a minimum so somewhere further out, right? But I just want to look at what the, what's happening. Okay. So actually do a, do a graph. Okay. So what I do is try a bunch of different values for delta. Okay, let's try 100 different values, starting at my minimum, and now increasing up to 20 rather than increasing up to um, 2.99. Okay. Um, this stuff is because I'm being sort of a cool kid and doing vectorization. You can do it in a loop. Let's not let's skip over this. Okay. And what I'm going to do is basically for every one of these values, right, I'm going to do Fit, fit my model, okay, with a very small bound. We basically get the likelihood at that, at that one particular delta that I want to search. It's looking right there. What do, what's your AIC? All right, so I'll run that. And you don't see things running, but actually what it's doing is going through a bunch of them. It just keeps printing to the screen, but they're the same height, so you don't see it updating. Okay, now it's done. All right, so now I have my, my list of Likelihoods and things. Okay. And then let me get my AAC values. Okay. And now we're going to run with a bigger range. Okay. Now I'm going to plot my delta values versus my AAC values. Okay. And that plot is this one. Okay. So what do you see here? Look at the axis. So AIC. Which, which end is better? Bottom. Right, good. Okay. You want to be down. Okay. Delta um, is just the, the tree threshold parameter, right? And if it's less than one, I slow down. If it's greater than one, I speed up. Okay. And my initial ones were maxed out around here. Okay. So we'll say I might be able to go down a little bit more. Okay. The problem is the scales are off. So let me zoom in on just this part. Okay. One other thing to look at is this looks pretty smooth here. Let's go get a little jump here. Okay. And if you look at it closely, actually, what's happening is you're getting some error values and causing some chunkiness. Okay. So let me zoom in there. Well, well let's check that out. So here, what I, all I've done is truncated off when the values go up to 40. I just zoomed in when the values are 20 and under. Okay? Pretty interesting. Now, what do you see? Where's the best value? So here's the highest number, the lowest number, the high number. Yeah, it's around 4. All right? So I was doing what was over here. Right. And to make it even clearer, 
just put on some pretty lines. So you see that all, all the code was just pretty lines. Lines, text. Okay. So here are my original constraints, my bounds. So near zero and near three. Here's the ASC value I was getting for my delta model. Here's the ASC value I was getting for my VM model. Okay. And here's the actual ASC value for my delta model. Okay. So what do we conclude? Mm -hmm. Yep. So if I increase the bounds that we're searching, I can actually get a, be get a better score. Okay. And I mean, the scary thing about this is, you know, Geiger's used hundreds of times in published papers. Right. It has one example file. This example file. Right. You did, you did basically example analysis, and even so, it was giving you the wrong answer. Right. It's giving you a value of three. And the right answer is like four and a half. Which is a you know a fairly big difference. When you think about you know, looking for like a ten percent difference, I mean that's a significant difference right, in terms of rates of stretching. Okay, so something you now so no matter what you're using, you know using R, using SAS, using whatever, so you actually look and say, okay, here's my data, here's the results I'm getting back. Does that look right? There's something funny there. Okay, because often there might be. Okay, and that's where it helps to you know, understand what is it actually giving me. What does it all mean? Okay, and there's more code. This just makes a table, a pretty table. Okay. All right, and let's zoom back out a little bit for this one. All right, so here I just have summarized my variety motion model, this column, my defaults, this column, and I re re ran it with a bigger bounds, okay, a larger bounds that will improve that today. So with likelihood, likelihood improves a bit, with bigger bounds. Okay. Beta is beta change a bit. Delta to delta change, yes, right, but three is delta four. Okay, AIC, still better, right? Still not quite better than VM. Okay, but the point is we're so close that you can't tell that you know you can't say oh VM is much better than this one, or much better than VM. VM is slightly better, but definitely a lot of uncertainty with that. Okay, so if what you care about is delta, what you care about is the stretching parameter, right? Well, you could just say, okay, we take the best model, even though this model is almost as good. That's one way of doing this. Another way is to do sort of, sort of something that feels sort of like the, the um, mixed model, right? You could average results across the models and see what the average answer is, okay? And that's what I did here. <coughs> so I got um, delta AIC, right? So just AIC minus the smallest AIC. Okay, so the best model has a delta AC of zero. Okay. Um, this model has delta AC of 0.05. Okay. So the rule of thumb is if it's bigger than two, you know, there's somewhat different, it's bigger than 10, it's a lot different. These are almost identical. Right. And what you can actually do is do these AKIK weights. And basically what you do is you um, take the relative likelihood of the models. All that means is um, EXP to the point negative point five of delta AIC. Okay. Why you can get the derivation and you know, do it like as I was, but that's what we do. Delta likelihoods. And then you can just take the data that created those. Right. And so basically this is you use your weight for the BM model versus the delta model. Right. So BM has a weight of you know, 0.51, delta weight is 0.49. Okay. And what you can then do is do a model averaging. Right. And say, okay. What's my value for beta for this model? What's my weight for this model? What's my average value for beta for this model? Weight for this model? Combine them. Right? So if you see, it's about halfway between these two values. Okay, so taking into account the uncertainty of my model, this is the estimate I get. Right? 
And then for delta, the thing I really care about, I find out that delta has to be 3. So 2.5. Okay. Again, bigger than 1. All right, so if anything, peak depth is speeding up. Yeah? Uh, the, like the cutoff point, like 2 versus 10. Oh, um, it's, it's based on how you're multiplying the branches, right? So you're multiplying the, the lower branches by values. Well, let's, let's just dig into the code and look at it. So then like, so something like kappa is easy to understand, right? So kappa of 1, branches don't change. Kappa of less than 1, you have, you're raising to a power of less than 1 in strengths. Delta is similar, but let's just look at the code, right? So, so the function to scale is delta tree. Right? So normally I'd have like delta tree, and then phi, and then a value. If I just type delta tree in the parentheses, it'll give me the function, the actual code. Okay. <coughs> and so I can see um, what it does here. So for every, for every edge, for every branch in the tree, right, it's getting the length of the branch. It's getting the age of the, I think it's the root, root edge of the branch. It's where the branch starts. Okay. Um, yeah, the root edge. And then it's getting a rescaled length based on the age plus the branch length raised to delta minus the age raised to delta. Okay. So you see, if delta is 1, nothing happens. And finally, you know, so the true delta, the estimated delta is 2.5. Is that a lot or not? It's different from 1. It's bigger than 1, right? And there's some evidence. Some, there's, you know, substantial model weight for delta model. Half the weight goes to the delta model. So it's that. But there's no between, like, biological significance, uh, you know, statistical significance or weight, you know, significance, and whether it actually matters biologically. Right, um, you know, you know, the men in this room might be taller than the woman by you know 0 0.01 millimeters. Maybe they have enough power to touch back that. Right? So that, will that matter for evolution? No. Right? If they were tenfold different, you know, you know that would probably matter a lot. Okay. And so what we can do here to get a sense of this is just plot the things. All right. This is your question. So I will just pick my tree, drop the tip and plot it. Sorry. This has bigger margins because this, this is, so R, the margins are based on number of pixels often, and this screen has very few pixels, so. Anyway, you can see that, see, here's our original tree, and here's our delta tree. Yes, this is using, not the mixed model, we do the model averaged. So rather than, so rather than the value of 4, we're getting the 2.5 value. Because it's the, you know, it's the one I have the most information about, it, the best evidence for. Okay. So some uncertainty, and I take that into account when I do this. Okay. And so the yeah, MSW shows, you know, near the root now, we're having very little evolution on this model. Right? So it does seem that. Okay. So not only is this you know evidence that there's a lot of weight on this delta model, the actual parameter value does seem to matter. It's, big, it's far enough from one that it affects evolution. Okay. And it also rejects my hypothesis. Right. Peak depth is definitely not slowing down; it's speeding up through time. Okay. That's what analysis you, should, you you would do. So I'm just reporting delta AC is less than zero. And, you know, that's good. That, that's good you do that, but that's not all you need to do. You have to look and see, does it actually matter? Do I care? Right? Is there a problem somewhere? Like the problem with Geiger. Right. Any questions?
Yep. Yep. Yep, so that was, so actually, I glossed over this. Um, where was it? Yep. Where did, that, where did that? Yeah. Delta bigger bounds. Was just my tree, my data, my model, and now my bounds is this range. So rather than going from you know, near zero to two to three, I can go zero to twenty. Yep. And then I got, and then this gives it the best value. Yep. Good. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Right, let's, let's take a five-minute break. And then we can come back.